Hello everyone, it's Victor Campos. So let's check out how to set up our software uh, to write JavaScript in this class. Now I'm going to talk about how to use the Windows version of our software. This will work the same on a Mac and this will work the same on Linux. I'm just using an example operating system. So I've got Windows, this is Windows 7. Um, so uh, any version of Windows will work, any version of the Mac will work. Just go ahead and go online. We're going to go to visualstudio.com. Visual Studio is software that allows you to create a variety of types of apps. Now it's big, complicated software. We don't want Visual Studio. We want Visual Studio Code. This is a simpler, more direct uh, code editor. This is what we're going to use in the class. Now, if you would like to use something else like Notepad++, Dreamweaver, Sublime, Text Wrangler, it's all good. It all works. Whatever you're used to is fine. But I'm going to suggest Visual Studio Code. So I'll click to download. There'll be some introductory text. You want to save the download. This screen here, you might want to look at it at some point. It's got a lot of great information like keyboard shortcuts and all of that stuff. But then eventually the software is downloaded and you have to run it. So eventually it downloads and in my case it went to my downloads folder. So I'm going to find the file and then double click it to execute. Basically we're going to choose all the defaults here. No special changes need to be made. You might get a screen about setting these additional tasks. Do you want it on your, on your desktop? If you want, sure. Do you want an add open with code action? Sure. Register code as editor of supported file types? Sure. And add to the path. I kind of like to turn all of these on because I can quickly open up visual code to edit ver a variety of uh, types of code files. Um, so I, I like turning these on. And then install. Depending on your system, this may happen fast or slow. Eventually, you'll get Launch Visual Studio Code. So I'll finish. I'll probably get the web browser pop up and uh, that same Getting Started screen. So I would read that at some point. And then I get the software. The way the software works is that you can create files or projects locally on your computer or up on uh, a server. This is the welcome page. For some quick practice to see how this works, we're going to create a simple HTML project and see the workflow. So we may think about going to a new file, but actually I want to open a folder. Our projects are going to be inside of folders. All of the supporting files will be in a folder. So later on we will see the importance of this more. But at the moment, we think in terms of opening a folder. So just to make it simple, on the desktop, I'm going to create a new folder. Week 2. In Visual Code, then, I will open that folder on my desktop. And now Visual Code changes to show me I'm exploring a current folder. What I currently have opening and editing is this welcome screen, which I can close. There's nothing in the week two folder. So I have the options of creating a new file, another folder, refreshing, or collapsing this. So if I create a new file, I'll call it index.html, press enter. So now I've got a new file in the week two folder. I can confirm that back on my desktop I've got index HTML file. I also in my case get a pop-up about Microsoft.NET Framework. This is going to continue to pop up so it's a good idea to download it if you don't have that software. This adds extra features to Visual Code and I highly recommend it. That would be its own process that you can do on your own but I'm going to pretend I did click to download and install it 
and then I'll continue. You probably already have, if you've been using Windows, you probably already have this .NET framework. It's just that the particular computer I'm working with is a very basic computer, it doesn't have that much installed, so you may need to. Just to test this out, I'm going to write a little HTML file. Angle bracket, exclamation point, doc type, space HTML. I'm going to create a simple HTML5 document. Angle brackets HTML, close the HTML. Angle bracket head, slash head. Now, as we get used to using this code editor, it's going to pop up with hints. For example, I'm adding the body tag. When any of these hints pop up, you can double click them to use them. You can also press tab. You can press the arrow keys up and down to cycle between them. This is to save you effort. This is very useful, but you can of course ignore it. You can press escape to close it. I'm creating here the body tag slash body. Again, I'm pressing tab to save me some effort. Back to the head. This time I will add a meta tag with a car set equal to UTF-8-8. Close that. And then a title. Hello world. In the body, I'll create an H1 tag. I'll write the same. In this simple 12 lines of code is all that I really need to get started with. In the beginning, we'll use an HTML file to also write our JavaScript code. To see this result, I can save it. Use the shortcuts as much as possible. Memorize them. That way you can get done faster. I'll save it. Again, I'm going to get this pop-up about this requirement, which I will do. And if you keep getting it, I would recommend that you do do it. So this HTML file, then, I need to run it in a web browser. One way to do it is I simply go back to the folder where the HTML file is and double-click it. This will open in the default web browser. Any web browser should work. Whichever one you like to use will be fine. I'm going to, however, recommend for the class to use Google Chrome. So I already have Google Chrome installed. I want to run my, my code files in the Google Chrome browser. So in Windows, you can right-click, Open With, and choose the browser. But I'm going to set this permanently so that every time I open up an HTML or JavaScript file, it automatically opens in Chrome. So I can choose Default. I'm going to select Chrome, turn on Always Use the Selected, and click OK. So I get the same result as in the previous browser, but it's going to be useful using Google Chrome and Firefox when we debug our code, which we'll get to later. I can then return to my project. I can go to File Exit. So what I created was an HTML file just to get used to Visual Studio Code. If you open Visual Studio Code again, it remembers your last project. I was in the Week 2 folder with the index file open, which is very useful if you're continuing to work on a certain project. You can also go to File, Close Folder, so it goes back to the welcome screen. If you were able to download and install Visual Studio Code, you're on your way to success in this class. Take a moment to check out the different menu items, explore the different buttons and links, check the help section, follow these links under the welcome screen to get used to this code editor. Again, if you'd like to use your own favorite editor, Sublime, Notepad++, Dreamweaver, Atom, etc., feel free to do so. But you're going to need some kind of code editor, and I recommend Visual Studio. 
and some sort of web browser. I recommend Google Chrome. Firefox will also work, as well as Safari, Internet Explorer, and Edge. So come back for the next video so we can really get to work. This has been Victor Campos.